Hi and hello everyone. What we were seeing in the previous lecture was this MG1Q and what we have done is that we have derived the PK mean value formula by considering the system at arrival points right by employing the uh, mean value arguments and using results from renewal theory uh, we have obtained the PK mean value formula basically what we have obtained was this one WQ right as a product of three quantities one is this the other is rho over 1 minus rho and the third quantity is 1 by mu right which is basically expectation of s is what so that is what we have obtained and from this we have obtained all other quantities and we have filled this table and this table is what we call it as the pk mean value formula okay right and we have seen that in case of mek1 or you know md1 you know we can obtain the directly using this as well the mean value quantities is what we have seen now let us take another example uh, where you know we will make use of this pk mean formula to give certain inferences to the system under consideration now assume that a system which is currently working as an mm1 system like right? somehow you have model that you know the some system which is working currently as an mm1 system with certain lambda and mu and the lambda and mu that we have taken here is this lambda equal to 10 mu equal to 12 per hour okay now the management decided to give some sort of training to the server be it a machine or be it a human being whatever it is it is a training session at the end of which right what is expected is that after the training is completed or the server has undergone the training what is expected is that the service time would slightly increase but the variability of that uh, service time would see an improvement in the form of a decrease in the variance right so originally it was mm1 in in which case you know like uh, the mean and standard deviation are equal in the case of an exponential distribution uh, after the training what is that uh, you know it's expected that the mean would increase but the standard deviation would decrease is what is the case okay so the mean service time after the training is found out to be 5.5 minutes right from the earlier 12 12 means it was 5 minutes and the standard deviation is 4 minutes from the earlier 5 minutes okay so this system now since it has a different mean and uh, means and the standard deviation are different they are not equal and hence this is now falls under a general mg1 system okay now the management what is their interest they are interested to know what is the effect of this training that has happened uh, on the system per parameters of course the server what you have objective is that you know with the slight increase in the mean time you are reducing the variability of the service time that is what you have achieved but now what is its net impact on the whole system okay that is what they wanted to know and they are they would if it is positive or anything of that sort then they would like the server to undergo further training so that you know things can be optimally uh, improved okay so for which what we will do let us compare l and w after the training and before training for the system uh, these two parameters okay for the mm1 first case you know l is 5 which is equal to say rho, rho is lambda by mu which is 5 by 6 so l is rho by 1 minus rho which turns out to be 5 here and w is basically using little's law you can obtain to be half so that means it is 30 minutes right because these are in hour so this becomes 30 minutes this was before training after training now that you are mean is this the standard deviation is this you can go back to a formula which involves the mean and standard deviation which means this two formula you will use now okay these two formulas now you will use to compute the l and w which turns out to be now 8.625 and w is 51.75 minutes okay you see how you know you thought that you know with a variability reduction in the service time system parameter should improve but you can see deterioration here 
so it is not uh, profitable to have the server better trained okay here what happened is that with training the mean increased by 10% while well, the standard deviation decreased by 20% okay but what you see ultimately is that the performance of the system is sensitive or more sensitive to mean rather than the standard deviation that's why even though the standard deviation reduction was 20% the mean increased by 10% this is was crucial okay so that's what you know you are ultimately seeing it here now if you ask the question that what is the reduction of variance required to make up for the increase of 0.5 so instead of 4 say for example if i have to make for this 5.5 what would be the reduction that would require whether it is 3 whether it is 2 or 4.5 what is what is the required variance so that you know you will see the same l at least okay so what you do the, how do you get that one can do this by solving for sigma b square from the pk formula right this was the l rho becomes then 11 by 12 so substitute of this lambda is known rho is known everything is known you want to achieve l as 5 so what is the sigma b square this would yield that this is less than 0 so which is not possible so that means what l is greater than 5 always even with sigma square b is 0 even if you put l is going to be and if you put sigma square b equal to 0 which is what is the corresponding md1 system l is turning to be 6 so you can't reduce any further if, if mean is increased to 0.5 okay but now you can ask slightly different one along the same line suppose if the mean becomes 5.2 after the training now what is the value of this required to yield the same l means with the same performance measure because you know that is what is uh, the idea that you know how much variability I can reduce uh, from there you can you can you can compute this along using the same line. So this is sort of you know a reverse engineering kind of thing right you know in you, if you want to retain the same l what would be then the variability how much reduction you would expect after the training to happen so that you retain the same l so you can ask this question of course and to try that okay so this is what uh, you know another example there where you know we are using this result basically we are comparing the systems as well uh, between this and so on okay so you can you can directly use this uh, pk mean value formula to answer questions of this nature where you are concerned about the system size probabilities but only on the mean values. Now the, we said that that was the first derivation using the arrival points but the same formula can be derived by using a similar argument but by using now departure time points right. So this is basically what the, the, the pk mean value formulas that we given in the table. Now if you consider the number of customers remaining in the system immediately after a customer has departed from the system, okay. then in this particular case we can first derive a formula for L and from L other quantities other formulas can be found out and this can be shown or this is supposed to be the same right is basically shown to be equal to the expected steady system size at arbitrary point in time. Now, we will not it is there in the text but we will not do this but what we will do directly is that now we will directly get the departure point probabilities departure time point probabilities directly and from where again you know one can obtain this particular measures if even if you do not do not want uh, to consider the departure point system size probabilities one can even directly consider the departure point and again by the mean value formula directly also you can obtain that is the idea behind this okay because it is just a repeat only thing is the ideas are slightly different but we will directly go to departure point system size probabilities which for the mg1q which is what we will it will result in this pk formula or more specifically now what we are going to get is this uh, pk transform formula okay so let us denote this quantity pi n to denote the steady state probability of n in the system at a departure point excluding the customer who is departed 
which means how what is the just after the the type time point immediately after the time point what is the number in the system right just after the departure what is the number in the system that is what we denoted by pi n one can notice that in general it need not be the case that pi n equal to p n p n is what is the arbitrary time point probabilities a n earlier we have considered as arrival point probabilities now pi n in this particular case is what the departure point probabilities system size probabilities in general this need not be the case the departure point probabilities need not equal the arbitrary time point probabilities but here in the case of mg1 q this is true so that we will see later okay so because then if we obtain this pi n if this is true and it is true here then this will also be equal to p n and that is the reason why we said that here even though you are looking at the departure times and then obtaining the moments it will also be equal to arbitrary time point moments but now we are looking at the probabilities themselves okay now this mg1 q viewed at uh, departure epochs leads to an embedded discrete time markov chain we said that uh, you know we are going to use this embedded markov chain technique for the analysis of uh, semi markovian queuing system so here for the mg1 q if you view the the system at departure points then you can extract an embedded markov chain now here in general for the mg1 q if i consider the number of customers in the system at an arbitrary point of time t which is n of t this is not a markov process as we already see because the state of the system after a transition depends not only on the state of this process at that point of time but also the amount of elapsed service time of the person receiving service if there is any service person or any customer who is receiving the service okay now whereas this was not the case in markovian queuing models because the elapsed time is uh, again exponential or the residual lifetime is again exponential so one need not worry about that but here it does matter because the service time distribution does not have the memoryless property okay but this nt is not a markov process but suppose if i call the amount of elapsed service time as some other process say some qt then this nt qt as a two dimensional process will be a markov process that's what we said together they form a markov process nt alone is not a markov process nt markov process means what whatever whether it is in one dimension or two dimension or any number of dimension the future evolution of the process depends only on the current state of the process okay if that is the case then the markovian property is holds true right not it does not depend on anything on the past that's what you know you are seeing here okay so here nt alone would not determine as obvious because how long the current customer who is currently undergoing service was in service that will determine how much more time he is going to get service right so that is determined that is required to be known for the future evolution of the process right even if you look at the number in the system right so so that's the reason why this nt is not a markov process but together they form because together now you get the complete information about it okay but if we look at such process at some specific time points okay at some specific time point then you can extract a markov chain or we can extra you can see at those time points the system will behave like a markov chain okay and here in the mg1 q one such uh, points or a set of points is the departure points okay because as you see at any point of time t if you look at it you need to remember what is the number in the system at the point of time and how long has been the service completion happened for the current customer who is under, currently undergoing service but if i look at departure points that elapsed service time is zero right so if 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 that is the case then the evolution of this nt from this departure point to next departure point 
right if i if i can look at it then i can forget the elapsed time now what i need to know is that apart from what is there in the at this point it is basically it's a regeneration point or restarting point right this suppose if i call this as a departure point now from and this is the next departure point now from this to this the departure point right what i need to know is that what was the number here and how many people you know who have arrived during this period would determine what would be the number in the system at the next departure point right so if if i can get along with this the number in the system at this departure point say nth departure point now if i want to look at the number in the system at n plus 1th departure point now between this nth and n plus 1th departure what was the number who arrived if i know that and what was the number at nth departure point then i can determine what is the n plus 1th departure point what was the number in the system right so in in that way like this evolution of this nt which is what our ultimate aim that the number in the system in in the queuing system is can be captured very nicely if i look at departure points in this particular case okay so say for example to put it in a more concrete form let t1 t2 t3 and so on be the sequence of departure times from the system now i am looking at xn to be n at tn just after tn so we have put a plus here otherwise n of tn also you can write so xn equal to n of tn this is the number of customers left behind by the departure that has happened at time tn okay that means that this is the number in the system immediately after the departure of a customer at time tn okay now if i if i y t denotes the number of customers left behind in the system by the most recent departure right so that that is y of t i define to be xn for t lies between tn and tn plus 1 right in this manner right if i define then y t y of t will give me the number of customers left behind in the system by the most recent departure right then one can see this y t is a semi markov process having this xn as its embedded markov chain and this xn tn right is the markov renewal process here so the sequence of intervals which is tn plus 1 minus tn this is the inter departure times of the successive units are equivalently the tn themselves defines a renewal process right go back to your definition of renewal process we have taken some iid random variables xns and used it to define sn and used it to define the process say yt which is semi markov process so here that tn minus 1 tn is what are those xns and this tn is what corresponds to those sns and yt we are defining it in this manner with semi markov process okay so this is what you have here so this is what uh, is the semi markov process that you are considering under this okay so this is the semi markov process this pair is the markov renewal process or equivalently this process is the inter departure times of service uh, successive units this is what will constitute the uh, renewal process okay that's why we, here we have a poisson a markov poisson process arrival and a renewal process service process a renewal service process means this is what the inter departure times are renewal process is what you have then basically what you have is the semi markov process and where n is uh, xn is given by this and you think that you know you are defining this process yt so this yt process which is what is the the semi markov process connected with this mg1q is this one yt which is the number of customers left behind by the most recent departure that's what the semi markov process that we have here okay so this is what uh, is the markov chain that we are talking about so if i look at here xn then we know this xn right xn is the embedded markov chain that's what you know we were looking for it okay now what we will do we will treat this xn uh, to study like what we can do with this and how one can analyze the mg1q based upon this xn now to do that let us denote an to be the number of customers who arrived during the service time of the nth customer 
okay so if denote an is the number of customers who arrive during the service time of the nth customer okay then if i look at what is xn plus 1 xn plus 1 i know is the departure point system size okay so when the x n plus 1th customer leaves the system what is the number left behind can be written in terms of xn and an plus 1 as given here suppose if there is no customer was there in the system when the nth customer left then what would have happened first one customer could have arrived there is some at some point of time right and during right then the, the n plus 1th departure would be the customer who arrived when an empty system was there and his departure is what is n plus 1th departure right so what would be the number that he will be leaving behind in the system is exactly the number of customers who arrived during his service time that is simply a n plus 1 right so that's the relationship here when x n equal to 0 suppose if uh, leaves at least one customer in the system when the nth departure happens then when n plus 1th departure happens so the number who were originally there at the point of time of nth departure was x n and when n plus 1th departure means out of this x n one will depart so out of those x n x n minus 1 would be the now the new number but during this one customer who was getting served during his service time this many number of customers would have arrived so the total number that will be left behind by the n plus 1th customer is basically x n minus 1 plus a n plus 1 this is the recursive relationship between the accents basically the accents are the departure point system sizes okay now we want to see that this is a markov chain okay in general it is easy to see if you know the markov theory that if xn plus 1 is a function of xn and some other random variable which is independent of the past process of this accents okay then that will define a markov chain it's obvious because the evolution of this xn plus 1 right as long as this an plus 1 is independent of this xn minus 1 xn minus 2 and so on right then this quantity this whole evolution then would depend only on the what is the system state at the time n or what is the value of xn and this and this has no relationship with this past history of xn okay so if that is the case then this will be a markov chain that will be clear we can see so if you want to show that this is a markov chain then we have to show that the future states of the chain depends only on the present state which means that xn plus 1 is dependent on xn only and not on xn minus 1 xn minus 2 and so on okay now first we can observe that xn plus 1 depends on xn and an plus 1 and as we just said if an plus 1 is independent of this xn minus 1 xn minus 2 and so on then xn would form a markov chain right now what is an plus 1 an plus 1 is the number of customers who arrive during the service time of the n plus 1th customer right remember what is the arrival process arrival process is a poisson process right which has stationary increments independent increments right so because of those properties that this an plus 1 is depends only on the length of the service time but does not depend on the events that occurred earlier which means the queue size at earlier departure points right because whatever be the duration in the past what has happened like how many arrivals is happening in an interval of length t right it depends only on the length t like where this interval is positioned it does not matter so what has happened before the nth departure what was the size and what was the duration it has no impact on the number of customers who are going to arrive during this period that's the you know the independent increment property that helps you to get okay and where this interval is positioned is also because of the stationary increment property it just it just the length of the 
interval that is all it, it required ok. So, and hence this a n plus 1 is independent of this x n minus 1, x n minus 2 and so on right. So, because of this then x n is a Markov chain. So, one can easily see that this x n is a Markov chain of course, if this is the case a n plus 1 is independent of x n minus 1 and so on and x n plus 1 is a function of x n and a n plus 1 then it is a Markov chain one can easily show in general that is what you know it is happening here. So, this is we have shown that this is a Markov chain. So, now we now derive the transition probabilities for this Markov chain which is basically p i j probability of x n plus 1 equal to j given x n equal to i. Now, so this transition probabilities right because x n is given that x n equal to i what is the probability that x n plus 1 equal to j depends on how many numbers of customers arrived during the service time of this n plus 1 customer ok. Now, since uh, the nth or n plus 1th or you know some kth customer the index does not play a role in as far the distribution of the service time because they are all IID right. So, we drop the subscript a n and we consider a and s, s is the service time which has a cumulative distribution function which we denote it by b capital B and a denote the number of random number of customers who arrive during one service time right because all of them are IID that is why now. So, then for i is equal to 0, 1, 2 if I call this k i which is probability of i arrivals during a service time if you want to look at this probability mean what is the probability that there is uh, a equal to i which means there are i customers arrive during a service time. Now, how I can evaluate? I can now condition on the length of the service time right that is what precisely this gives you right. I condition on length of the service time and multiply by its distribution over all possible <coughs> duration which is 0 to So, this is basically total probability law that you have applied or conditioning argument that you have applied right. So, this is what you have obtained where we have written this as a steel J integral. So, even if it is discrete distribution or any other mixed distribution one can still write this very nicely. But whenever the density exists you can see that this is equal to the density times dt then it becomes ordinary Riemann integral right. As we said at the beginning itself like you know most of the results we will write it in this form to make it uniform or fit in more general situations ok. But now I have to find this probability, but what is this probability? This is you know S is fixed at T, I am looking at you know A arrivals during an interval of length T. Now, the arrival process is a Poisson process and hence this quantity that is A given S equal to T is a Poisson random variable with mean lambda times T and hence this quantity is exactly equal to this right. Now, if I substitute that here then I will get this as my k i which is an important quantity here ok. k i gives you now the num probability of i arrivals during a service time is given by this expression right. So, this is this is an important quantity in this analysis. So, you just remember that you know this is what you know you, are, you have obtained as k i. So, from this relationship from this so k i you have obtained here. Now, from this relationship between the random variables which is here now if x n given to be i what is the probability of x n plus 1 equal to j would be I can write in terms of probability of a being equal to certain quantity right. So, that from there that is what you know you are getting it here. So, from x n equal to i to x n plus 1 equal to j would happen when i is 0 right we simply said it is a n plus 1. So, it is basically a equal to j would take you to the system to j. If i greater than or equal to 1 then if a equals exactly j minus i plus 1 right then this is equal to uh, this is what will take you the system to j at time n plus 1 this is we have already said right what is this quantity 
this quantity is k times j minus i plus 1 and this quantity is k times j right that is what you know we have just denoted here right that is what is this particular case right this is what is ki. So, this is a is equal to this is what equal to this and this is equal to this right. So, this is what is the quantity that you have. So, p i j is basically this for i greater than or equal to 1 and for i is equal to 0 this is k j right. So, for example, the first one p i 0 i is 0. So, this is this is state 0 right. So, if I want to write 0 1 2 3 4 and so on 0 1 2 3 and so on if I want to write. So, this when i is equal to 0 probability of a is equal to j is simply k j. So, it is k naught k 1 k 2 and so on that you will get here. Now, when i is equal to j right when start i is equal to j. So, when i greater than or equal to 1 then x n plus 1 equal to 0 is given by this which is given by this. Now, for i is equal to 1 say for example right. So, then that I when i is equal to 1 the a is equal to j again. So, you will get the same this row here and when i is equal to 2 right when i is equal to 2. So, this has to be a non-negative quantity right otherwise this probability is 0. So, that is why you get this portion as 0 and then when i is equal to 2 the minimum value of the possibilities is the i is equal to 2 is j minus 1. So, that is basically equal to 1 only it will it can go to only 1 here which means 0 arrivals can happen there cannot be negative arrivals during that period. So, that probability is 0 that is what this happens here. So, this is k naught k 1 k 2 and 3 1 when i is equal to 3 you will get shifted. So, you see here this quantity. So, this leaving out this row if I look at the remaining ones ok. So, this whole quantity is then shifted by uh, one column that is what you know you will get here. So, this is the matrix. So, this matrix is what call m g 1 type matrix. In general in queuing theory this type of matrix is referred to as m g 1 type of uh, matrix ok. So, this is what is the transition probability matrix of this embedded Markov chain in the case of an m g 1 queue right. Now, this is what I, I obtained as PGF right. Now, assume that the steady state is achievable which is basically when we have to put find out the condition under which the system is ergodic the necessary and sufficient condition for the steady state to exist which is the usual condition of rho less than 1 which we are not going to prove, but you can assume that that is what is the case. Then the steady state probability vector if I want for this Markov chain they can be obtained in the usual way as a solution to this stationary equations. Now, pi is equal to pi p equal to pi e equal to 1 is what they will give you the stationary distribution right. Now, if I for this particular p if I multiply by pi this matrix and equal to pi then I will get this as the equation which I can we can write it in this form like I just putting the sum in, in, in the sum form here ok. So, so that is what you know you can think remember this k's are also a probability distribution this k's are also forming a probability distribution which is the during an arrival uh, during a service time what is the number of uh, arrivals happen. So, this k i's or k n's also form a probability distribution. So, this then what it is you can understand. Now, this is what you have here ok. Now, this is what is pi i in terms of this or pi i in terms of this is what you have here. Now, you define now two generating function one for pi i the other for k i call it pi of z and k of z. Now, this equation now you multiply by z to the power i and sum over i and then solve to get pi of z uh, in this manner in terms of pi naught ok. This is an exercise for you like you can we have done earlier like you just have to re, you know uh, remember what would be this particular case and then you will be able to get easily this step. We have done for example, in the case of uh, uh, say bulk arrival or such cases you know we have handled. So, it is the same similar manner that you will see. So, if you from this equation or from this equation 
then you will obtain pi of z in terms of k of z and pi naught as this expression. Now, as we say, as usual, we need to determine what is this pi naught for which we have to use the boundary condition that or the normalization condition that pi of 1 equal to 1. If I use that pi of 1 equal to 1, then uh, this quantity pi naught will turn out to be 1 minus rho, where rho is lambda by mu or lambda expectation of s, which is less than 1 is the necessary and sufficient condition for this steady state uh, to exist, which is also would be the case here. Now, once I substitute this pi naught, then finally you obtain a pi of z, which is this quantity. And this is what is called this PK formula, polachek kinchen formula or polachek kinchen transform formula because this is now relates the transforms of this case and this pi. It's, we can also we will, later we will see that we can write this in one more form again using transforms, but here both of them are tra z transforms is what you are seeing it here. So, this is uh, what is known as p k transform formula. Okay. So, this is what you can go as far as the analysis or the simplification of the process of obtaining the departure point system says probabilities goes. Okay. Now, what you need? So, once I know this, now I can obtain the p k mean value formula like I can differentiate this, I can obtain the departure point equilibrium or mean values and then you will get that that will be equal to since we already see not shown, we already observe set that okay, this will be equal to arbitrary time point. So, that will be the L in the general one as well okay. and hence other measures also one can obtain. So, how do we then work out in such scenarios is that now, given a service time distribution B, right, we know k i is written in terms of B. So, obtain this k i and from there you obtain k of z, you substitute in k of z here, right. Then from this, then your pi of z is completely determined and from here then you obtain this pi i's or pi n's that is the departure point system says probabilities and since here it is the case that pi n equal to p n that is also equal to the arbitrary time point system says probabilities. Okay. You see here in the semi Markovian system what we have done. Though the process n t is semi Markovian, one way to consider extract a Markov process is consider this n t along with the elapsed service time then together they form a Markov process then one can apply the Markov process theory and this is the uh, technique called supplementary variable technique. Okay. What instead of what we did we looked at this n t process only not at all times, but at specific time points which are the departure epochs and we could extract a Markov chain and from the study of this Markov chain we obtain for that corresponding Markov chain at those time points what is the system behavior whether it is mean number or probabilities and so on. Now, if one can show that that uh, system behavior at those specific time points would be probabilistically equal to the system behavior at an arbitrary time point, then we have done the analysis for the complete arbitrary time point analysis. So, for which what we need to see is that this whether this is true. It is we said that repeatedly that pi n equal to p n, but how this is pi n equal to p n is what we will see now quickly. Okay. So, what we want to show? We want to show that pi n which is the steady state probability of n in the system at a departure point is equal to p n which is the steady state probability of n in the system at an arbitrary point in time. Okay. Now, how do we see is that we consider a specific relation of the actual process over a long interval 0 to t. You take an interval of length 0 to t. Now, denote n of t as usual by the number in the system at time t or the system size at time t. A n of t specifically is the number of unit upward jumps or crossings from state n occurring in 0 to t. So, you fix a state n, okay. you, see, you fix a state n. So, from, from uh, the process n t, how many times you know it crosses, it is going above n is what then you are counting that is the number of unit upward jumps from state n in the interval 0 to t is what is you call it as a n of t. 
and d n of t is the number of unit downward jumps to state uh, to state n right in 0 to t from state n how many times it goes up is what you are counting this a n of t and to state n how many times it reaches right is what you are counting to that is what you call it as d n of t. Now, since the both arrivals and departure happens one at a time, so it must be true that uh, this a n of t minus d n of t the in absolute value this must be less than or equal to 1. Okay. Further, the total number of departures which has happened in, uh, in the interval 0 to t, 0 to capital T relates to total number of arrivals by this. right? So, n of 0 is the initial number when you are starting the system at time 0, n of t is the current one. Number of arrivals that has happened is a of t plus this was the initial one. So, this was the total number who are either in the system or arrived in 0 to t and n of t is the current number. So, the departure is essentially the difference of these two. right? And hence the departure point system says probabilities, right? This is the total number of departures, and this is the dNs, which is how many times you know it is leaving n or it is reaching n, right? So this n is what then the departure point system says probabilities as t. This is in the interval 0 to t, this is the proportion. Now, as t tends to infinity, what is going to be this quantity is what is this pi n sr as per you know this description of this. Now, what you do? You add and subtract an a n here okay, and we will use d t as this expression in the denominator. So, that means this quantity can be written as this. Okay. Now, since n naught is finite and n of t is also because of stationarity assumptions it cannot explode. Okay, number in the system is is finite with probability 1. So, that is what you know so this quantity is some finite number that is what you know we want it. So, this quantity is some finite number in the numerator this quantity is less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. So, if I take limit as capital T tends to infinity right noting that a of t tends to infinity. So, this limit would be equal to this limit right in both sides. This is some finite quantity this is some finite quantity. So, you will end up with only in the limit, the limit would depends only on this limit is depends only on the limit of this. So, that is what you are seeing it here. Now, what is this essentially? This is the departure point system says probabilities, this is the arrival point system says probability. So, what you are actually saying is that this pi n equal to a n with probability 1. Okay. Now, since the arrivals occur at the points of the Poisson process operating independently of the state of the process, we invoke the pasta property to show that the uh, to see that the general time probability p n is identical to a n. Okay. Because the arrivals are process is Poisson, right. since Poisson arrivals see time averages. So, arrival point probabilities would be equal to the arbitrary time point probabilities as long as the pro arrival process is Poisson. Right. So, because of this p n equal to a n and from this relationship a n equal to pi n. So, ultimately what you are seeing here is then your a n equal to p n equal to pi n means all three quantities arrival point probabilities, departure point probabilities, arbitrary time probabilities all of them are equal and hence what we have obtained so far whether we looked at the mean value formulas, arrival point, departure point or the departure point system says probabilities they will all be the same for even if you consider at the arbitrary time points. right? So, that is what you know you are seeing it here. right? So, all three sets of probabilities are equal for mg1 probability. So, what we have obtained though it is a departure point system of probabilities they can also be considered as the arbitrary time point uh, system says probabilities arbitrary time point mean value formulas and so on. Okay. Let us quickly take an example before we close. So, if we set the service time distribution as exponential the mg1 should reduce to mm1 as we know. Okay. So, what is this service time distribution then is given by this expression right 
if the parameter is mu, this is what is the CDF of the service time distribution. Now, what is Ki? Ki is this expression, right? Now, since this is a distribution which has a PDF, this will be equal to the PDF times dt, which is what is this quantity we have written down here. Now, what you have to do? So, this lambda to the power i, you take it out, one mu you take it out, i factor you take it out, you will get here, then this is what you, you have here. Now, this one, this gamma quantity will give you i factorial and hence this and this will get cancelled because here, suppose if you make a transformation lambda plus mu times t is equal to some u, then you can write this whole integral and then after that you will be leaving out with this that will be equal to will result in i factorial time divided by this quantity. So, this, this will get cancelled. So, this will result in this expression as you see this is a geometric distribution. So, the number of arrivals during an exponential service time is what is a geometric distribution. If you know like a Poisson process, of course, if you have two independent Poisson processes, then also one can get in, in this manner easily. So, that is what it is actually. So, now once I get this Ki, I can get its PGF, right. It is just that you know this the PGF of this geometric distribution which will result in this expression of k of z, right. Now, using k of z in pi of z, pi of z is 1 minus rho times 1 minus z times k of z by k of z minus z. Now, k of z I have obtained as this. So, this now I can simplify this a bit to arrive at this expression and which is nothing but the PGF of an mm1 q, which is basically there we called p of z because this was obtained for arbitrary time point. This is we call pi of z which is also equal to p of z in the case of mg, mg1 model as well. So, we obtain the PGF of the corresponding mm1 model, right, and from which we can obtain the distribution, right. Even if you have some other distribution here, this is the process that you need to follow, right. k of i, either you find directly k of z or you obtain k of i and then you find k of z. Now, once I obtain k of z, given the service time distribution, I can obtain k of z, k of z substitute in this pk transform formula to get pi of z. Now, extract from this to get the system size probabilities, right. So, that is the way one does the analysis in the, with respect to the mg1 model, right. So, we will stop uh, the discussion of mg1 model at this point of time, which is basically the art we have considered is the pk mean value formula, pk transform formula we are given to obtain the mean values as well as the system size probabilities. So, given any service time distribution, which could now you can think about any arbitrary service time distribution. It could be one point distribution, two point distribution, or a discrete distribution, continuous distribution, anything you can think about it, right. This is the steps that you will follow to arrive at pi of z. How complex is that? That depends on the distribution that you are picking it up. So, in this case, for example, in a very easy, it is exponential. We wanted to show that this formula reduces to the exactly same formula corresponding mm1 case. So, that is what we have done here. Okay. So, we will stop here, uh, we will continue with our discussion of further some more ideas of mg1 in the following lectures. Thank you.